Hello everyone and welcome back. So today I will be talking about uh, gravitational potential energy. And uh, what I will be talking about is I will try to reconcile uh, two different formulas that you might have learned for uh, gravitational potential energy. First is of course the very basic MGH formula that is uh, U is equal to MGH that is uh, a body that has been taken to a height H above the surface of the earth, it is said to have this amount of potential energy. And if you have taken a calculus based physics course, then you know that uh, this is also, well, not exactly equal to, but uh, you can say that uh, this is, uh, there's another expression for gravitational potential energy, and that expression is of the form minus G M M by R. And this expression is with respect to a body kept at infinity. And uh, where m uh, capital M and small m are the masses, I, I need two masses, and r is the separation between them. So naturally, someone who has uh, recently found this formula, it's pretty confusing at first because how do you get this formula from sort of this really weird expression, right? I mean, these two really seem completely different and not at all related. Well. To understand this, we'll have to think about what we really mean when we say that a body has had a gravitational potential energy that is equal to mgh, right? So let us go down over here and let me draw the surface of the earth, right? So if you have got our earth over here, and on this earth we have a body of mass m that has been kept over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take it to a height h over here and keep it over here. So when we say that it has gained an amount of energy, we say that we always see this in respect to something else, right? We say this in respect to say the ground state where it has now more potential energy than this object that has been kept at the ground. So whenever we talk about energy, we always talk it, talk it in terms of differences. That is, we really don't care about the absolute value of energy because firstly, we really can't define an absolute energy. We always need require a reference point. And secondly, because whenever we do any form of calculations, we always compare two different energy states. We never take an absolute energy, right? Because suppose when we're doing some law of conservation of energy problems, we always try and sort of equate two different states. That is before a body, when a body was kept at the surface of the earth, when a body is kept taken to a high touch, and when a body is left fallen, left, when a body is left, allowed to fall under the influence of gravity, we always compare different states. We never just uh, take a definite state. So we always try and find the differences between uh, two different state, two different states. So when we say that U is equal to mgh, we have to understand that it is with respect to the body at earth. That is what that has been kept at the surface of the earth. Similarly, when we see that u is equal to minus gmm by r, we see this with respect to a body kept at infinity. And as you can see from this formula, which I will actually cover most likely in a later video, a proper derivation for this formula. When we try and suppose add a plus a gmm by r, and we say that suppose r infinity, well, if we just try and substitute infinity over here, we'll get a zero which is what we actually say is the board energy of a body that has been kept at infinity. So again, this is also a formula where we are sort of comparing the differences in energy of uh, two different states. So with that in mind, let us actually sort of uh, do some algebra over here and try to work out the MGH formula, right? So if I take the second formula and try to find uh, the differences in energy, energy so let me write u1 that is when it is at the surface of the earth we let that energy be equal to minus g mm by capital r where re where re is the radius of the earth and of course i'll write this to be me as well to denote the mass of the earth and i could write a plus zero to denote the uh, or difference in energy at a because we always take it with reference to infinity, but that's always implicitly implied whenever we work with this uh, value. That is, when we, whenever we work with the gravitational potential energy. And we can specify the second energy to be equal to minus uh, capital G M E M by 
R e plus H that is when it has been taken to a height H and now what we'll do is we'll take the differences of these two energies and the result might be a bit surprising that is we will actually finally get uh, our expression above but it won't be exactly clear how exactly we arrive at it so that is we will get to the expression that we have over here above over here that is of mgh but it will be quite surprising how exactly we arrive at it so let us take a u2 minus u1 that is delta u and the, this is equal to minus a g m e m i've taken that to be common and we can write this to be 1 by r e plus h minus 1 by r e right so now uh, we can simply uh, sort of do a subtraction let me go down over here we can uh, minus a g capital m e m now we've got a R e minus uh, R e uh, minus h by R e into R e plus h and clearly we can cancel these R e's and we left with an h and what we can write is uh, g m e m by R e into R e plus h so this is the difference in the energy that is delta u and what we're going to do over here is we're going to take an r e square uh, common from the denominator so g m e m by r e square times 1 plus h by r e now what are we going to do with this 1 plus h by r e and why is I did I take it to be common well in the in our case we have uh, h to be much much lesser than re and this is something that i forgot to mention before that is the first formula that we have over here is only an approximation when the height h is much 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 lesser than the radius r of the surface of the earth or that is radius r of the earth and so when we have this we can virtually neglect the second term in our denominator that is this term can be taken to be approximately equal to zero so what we are left with is basically delta u is approximately g m e by r e square times m now am i forgetting something right i have forgotten to write h everywhere hold on so that's h over here there's an h over here and there is an h over here as well now g m e by r e square now this value is nothing but the acceleration due to gravity at the surface of the earth that is we can call choose to call this to be g naught because acceleration due to gravity is nothing but the acceleration of from newton that we get from newton's law and if we divide the mass out we'll get this expression that is g capital m e by r e square and i chose to call it g naught because this is the specific acceleration due to gravity at the surface of the earth so this delta u is again approximately equal to and we have the expression that is this is approximately equal to m g naught h which is what we were uh, hoping to get now again i cannot stress this enough this is actually an approximation that is the formula that you've been learning from say so guess whenever you started st studying physics seriously this is actually just an approximation it is only valid for heights that are much much lesser than these so radius of the earth and to illustrate this example let me just uh, do a short problem and i'll solve it using both formulas that is i'll use delta u is equal to mg naught and i'll use it using the convent the proper definition of gravitation potential energy right so let us say that an object over here is taken to a height that is equal to the surface of the radius of the earth my bad and this is re and that is also re so what we have to do is we have to find the velocity of the body when it reaches the surface of the earth that is what is this kinetic energy so if you were to use a conventional formula we would apply say a conservation energy so this is equal to m g h is equal to uh, half m v square so we can cut the m's and what we will be left with is root of 
two G H and in our case this is nothing but R E. So we can substitute R E over here. So that's two G R E. However, as you'll see, this answer is actually completely wrong because uh, this approximation simply breaks down when we get to uh, heights that are approximately the surface of the A to the Earth. All right, and if we try to do this the proper way using the formula that I actual G minus G M by R formula. So we can write this to be, I suppose, uh, from conservation of energy of conservative fields, we know that uh, delta U plus uh, delta K is equal to zero. That is, mechanical energy is always conserved. So in our case, uh, delta U would be the the final potential energy minus the initial potential energy plus the final kinetic energy plus uh, the initial kinetic energy. Now the initial kinetic energy is obviously zero. So keeping that in mind, we can write this to be minus uh, G capital M E M by R E plus uh, uh, G M E M by 2 R E plus uh, half M V final square minus zero. So we won't include that in the calculation. And we can take the, we can keep the kinetic energy on one side and take the other term on the other side. So we've got a half m v final square is equal to minus g m e m by 2 r e plus g m e m by r e and this will actually turn out to be equal to cap g m e m by 2 r e and this will be equal to half m v final square. So you can cancel the m m's on one side. We can cancel the twos over here. So v final is equal to root of g m e by r e. But we can't really compare this because this isn't equal to equivalent to the previous expression we had because that is just considered of only g and small g and h, whereas this has capital g m e and r e. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply and divide by r e so that we equal to capital G M E by R E square times uh, R E and this as I said earlier is nothing but small g this acceleration to gravity times R E so clearly this is actually root 2 times the value that we got in earlier because the value from the previous calculation that is V F dash was root 2 G R E from Macron so the, clearly the approximation does not work for heights that are uh, not insignificant so I thought this I thought I'd share a small example just to sort of make that concept clear and otherwise the video would have been too short at that mm -hmm. so this is a short little video explaining uh, something that is I feel is not often addressed in textbooks and in many other places and so I think that will be it and uh, thanks for watching